Cars is a Pixar classic with a list of Easter eggs and hidden details a mile long. Take a look at some of our favorites and see what you missed the first time around. Lightning McQueen, voiced by Owen Wilson, is the rookie racing extraordinaire on the road to greatness. First stop, the Piston Cup. Take a look at Lightning in the opening race. Like the rest of him, Lightning McQueen's back end is plastered with his sponsor Rusty's branding, including a yellow stripe which reads, Medicated Bumper Ointment. But did you know that the bumper stripe itself has extra significance? Since this is Lightning's first Piston Cup race, it's tradition for racers to display a yellow rookie stripe on their rear-end bumpers. Looks like the Rusty's team took advantage of the situation, and there's more to see at the Piston Cup. See if you can spot car number 84. It's white with the Apple logo. This is a cool little Easter egg, because the late Steve Jobs co-founder, chief executive and chairman of Apple Computer previously owned Pixar. And the car's number? Another hidden detail. Apple released the Macintosh, the first widely sold personal computer, which revolutionized Apple as a company in what year? 1984, of course. But check out who else is on the track. McQueen's biggest competitor is a car called Chick Hicks, played by Michael Keaton. He's a stock car who doesn't care who he has to run over on his way to the top. Feeling the heat from lightning, Chick creates a dangerous pileup in the hopes of wrecking McQueen's chances of a win. Dodging all the wreckage, lightning bounces off an overturned car's tires and takes to the skies. In mid-air, he flashes his lucky sticker at his fans, but more interestingly, he sticks out his tongue. This is the unmistakable trademark of basketball great Michael Jordan. When he stuck his tongue out on the basketball court, you knew he meant business. Believe it or not, he's not the only one the artists make a reference to with Lightning's tongue. Every now and then, Lightning McQueen's tongue pops out when he's thinking really hard, a characteristic shared with none other than writer-director John Lasseter and his trait incorporated into the movie by some animators who wanted to poke a little fun at him. Here's another fun Lasseter-inspired fact. Did you know that it was John Lasseter's idea to put the eyes into the characters up on the windshield instead of in the car's headlights, like was done in most cartoons? He and the Pixar animators decided this choice made the characters more expressive. This isn't the first time Disney used this design, though. It was largely influenced by the Disney cartoon Susie the Little Blue Coop, which just so happens to be one of Lasseter's favorites. Don't blink or you might just miss this next Easter egg. During the montage when Mac is driving Lightning McQueen to California, keep an eye on the phone lines. Did you catch him? As the camera zooms along, you can briefly see and hear the birds from the Pixar short for the birds. Listen to this. Get your kicks on Route 66. Singer songwriter John Mayer covered this classic song Route 66 in the closing credits. But did you know the production wanted to use a little known version of the song by legendary rock and roll pioneer Chuck Berry? Berry's record company didn't even realize his version of the song existed, and now it's got a second life thanks to the montage when Lightning McQueen gets his Radiator Springs makeover. The Rusty's brothers, Rusty and Dusty, sure seem to be larger than life characters, but in fact their voices are performed by real life brothers, Tom and Ray Magliosi, who hosted a Radio Hall of Fame talk show called Car Talk. The catchphrase, don't drive like my brother, was first made popular on their show. On his way to Los Angeles, Lightning accidentally gets detoured to the sleepy town of Radiator Springs in a chase that leads him to tearing up the town's road. When he finally gets caught, the sheriff says, boy, you're in a heap of trouble. This is the signature line from Dodge commercials featuring actor Joe Higgins as the sheriff, which aired in the early 1970s. You're in a lot of trouble, boy. And there's another detail about the sheriff you might have missed. Did you notice the strange metal rods poking out from under the sheriff's car? They aren't just some character flourish, they actually fulfill a function. They're called curb detectors, and back in the 40s and 50s, these springy devices would make a scraping sound to let you know you were parking a proper distance from the curb. Since the sheriff is a 1949 Mercury, it makes sense to see this outdated but authentic feature on the police cruiser. Another fun little fact about the detectors, they were also called curb feelers, which happens to be the name of a shop in the Radiator Springs flashback sequence. Like the ill-fated town, the feelers went out of fashion in the 60s, but keep your eyes on the road. You never know when you might find a classic car with the feature installed for old times sake. And speaking of keeping your eye on things, did you catch this? Luigi is the 59 Fiat 500 who runs the tire shop, Luigi's Casa de la Tires in Radiator Springs. A fan of the European circuit, he dreams one day of servicing Ferraris. He's such a fan, in fact, that his license plate holds a hidden secret. The numbers read 445-108. No, that isn't a model of Ferrari. It's even more obscure than that. The numbers are actually the latitude and longitude for the main Ferrari factory in Modena, Italy. And there's another Radiator Springs resident with his own secrets. 
Perhaps the most influential citizen of Radiator Springs is Doc Hudson, better known by racing fans as the fabulous Hudson Hornet. He's voiced by acting legend and racing aficionado Paul Newman. In Doc's heyday, he won two national championships, but eventually left racing after a dangerous crash. This detail isn't based on Newman, but on the real-life NASCAR pioneer Herb Thomas, who drove Hudson Hornets to two national titles and also quit racing after dangerous crashes, but were not ready to leave Radiator Springs yet. Did you notice the mountain range visible behind Radiator Springs? It looks like the back ends of Cadillac sticking out of the ground. In the movie, this is called Cadillac Range. But can you believe this is inspired by a real place? It's based on an actual landmark known as Cadillac Ranch, an installation of half-buried, nose-down Cadillacs near Amarillo, Texas. Also, take a look at the Cozy Cone Motel. Its design is based on the famous Wigwam Motels along Route 66 in Holbrook, Arizona and Rialto, California. These motels featured individual cabins shaped like teepees, and even the name is a hidden reference. Cozy Cone was inspired by the Cozy Dog Drive-In, located in Springfield, Illinois, which claims to be the birthplace of the corn dog. Of course, you can't talk about the Cozy Cone in Radiator Springs without talking about its owner, Sally Carrera. Sally is the Porsche 911 Carrera, who catches lightning's eye. Though she now runs the Cozy Cone, back in her earlier California days she was a lawyer, and the details of her character development actually run even deeper. Her profession as an attorney is a reference to Portia, a nickname for female lawyers, which comes from a character in William Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. Portia, Portia, get it? If you like that reference, you're gonna love the next one. If you're a fan of movies, then you might know about the Wilhelm Scream. It's a sound effect from the Warner Brothers Library that has famously popped up in everything from Star Wars to Beauty and the Beast since its first recording for the 1951 movie Distant Drums. You probably even heard it if you don't know you have. During Lightning's first Dinoco fantasy, he fantasizes about starring in a big-budget action film, Lightning Storm. The Wilhelm scream can be heard when the first car on the freeway on-ramp disintegrates. If you're a true Pixar fan, this isn't the first time you've seen the Dinoco brand either. But do you remember where? The Dinoco brand was actually first seen in Toy Story as the brand of the gas station where Woody and Buzz get separated from Andy and have their famous confrontation. Other memorable Pixar references make appearances in Cars too, and in the case of the end credits, it's hilariously obvious. During the end credits, the characters head to the local drive-in. The movies they watch are car versions of Pixar films, Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., and A Bug's Life. Did you know that Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Billy Crystal, John Goodman, and Dave Foley were all brought back to reprise their roles with Cars Doctor Dialogue? Mac, voiced by John Ratzenberger, says that the car versions of the characters Ham, Yeti, and P.T. Flea must have been played by one great actor. They were, of course, all voiced by Ratzenberger himself. He also pokes a little fun at Pixar, though. When Mac realizes they use the same actor in all the movies, he complains, what kind of cut-rate production is this? You're going to want to pay close attention in order to spot this next Easter egg. You might already know about the significance of A113 in Pixar movies. But just in case you don't, here's a quick little refresher. A113 is a callback to the animation room at California Institute of the Arts, where many Pixar animators studied. And they just love to find fun opportunities to incorporate the number in their work. For example, look at the face of the train that lightning outruns. Emblazoned on each cheek is the train's number, A113. And that's not the only place you'll see it. Every Cars fan has a special place in their heart for Lightning's lovable bestest buddy in tow truck Mater, voiced by comedian Larry the Cable Guy. Take a close look at the back right corner of his bumper. There, under all the rust and grime, you'll see Mater's license plate with, you guessed it, the number A113. Did you know that Mater's not the only character voiced by a famous stand-up comedian? And one with a hidden detail, too. Fillmore, the groovy, organic, fuel-pushing Volkswagen bus is voiced by the late, legendary comedian George Carlin. And if you listen closely to Fillmore's voice, you'll hear that Carlin is performing an homage to a character he used to play early in his comedy career, Al Sleet, the hippy-dippy weatherman who would show up in places like The Ed Sullivan Show. Al Sleet here, you hippy-dippy weatherman. But there's more car details to come. Before leaving for the big race at Los Angeles International Speedway, McQueen decides to support all the local businesses in Radiator Springs. At Sarge's military surplus store, he buys night vision goggles, which makes sense when you remember that as a race car, Lightning doesn't have real functioning headlights, a fact that led to his nickname, Stickers. The goggles will help him travel safely on dark roads and anywhere else that isn't a well-lit racetrack. Thanks to Luigi and his companion Guido, there are moments in the movie where Italian is spoken but for some reason without subtitles. Did you ever wonder what they're saying? During the final race, Guido yells at Chick's pit crew in Italian, who do you think you're talking to? 
who are you talking to? Later, when Luigi faints at the sight of a Ferrari and two Maseratis in his shop, the Ferrari says to Guido, I hope your friend recovers, I was told that you're fantastic. And did you know who voiced the Ferrari? It was former Formula One racer Michael Schumacher, who isn't Italian at all but German. He did win five world championships for the Scuderia Ferrari racing team though, which basically made him an honorary Italian. I hope you liked the video and found some things you missed the first time in Pixar's Cars. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.